Greetings, my name's Mark Wilson from Cahoots Photo Books here in Perth. In this session, I want to cover some of the key decisions that you are going to need to make before you start making your photo book in our Easy Designer software. So, what are those decisions? At Cahoots, we've got a small square and a large square, and a small landscape and a large landscape. So our first format is our small fun 21 centimeter square photo book. It's our smallest book that we make, and it's also uh, our least value for money due to the fixed costs involved in the production. Sometimes though, a book just has to be small, and if that's the case, then this is the option for you. Our next size up is our A4 Classic Landscape. As you can see, it's about 50% wider than the 21 centimeter square. So you are getting 50% more room in which to make your photo book, but you're not paying 50% more in price. Similarly, our next size up is our 30 centimeter square large luxurious. It is 50% taller than our A4 landscape. But once again, you're not paying 50% more in price. And then lastly, our A3 landscape, unsurprisingly 50% wider than our 30 centimeter square, but you're not paying 50% more in price. Our most commonly selected formats that customers choose are A4 landscape and 30 centimeter square. The advantage of the A4 landscape is that it's going to fit in any standard height bookcase shelf, uh, but it can also sit quite happily on a coffee table, as can our 30 centimeter square large luxurious, which if you are going to store it in a shelf, would have to be bottom shelf or top shelf in the bookcase. The next decision you're going to have to make is what type of paper you'll want to have in your book. Our standard paper is 160 grams per square meter. It has a satin finish and by that we mean it has a slight uh, sheen to the paper. Not super glossy, but neither is it flat. Then uh, next up the scale, we have a slightly more expensive warm white matte paper. It has a texture or a touch uh, not unlike eggshell. It doesn't reflect where there's no printing, but where there are photos, you'll notice a small uh, amount of reflection uh, from the toner. The paper has a very fine texture, which you might see as well when you are actually looking at that reflection up close. Lastly, our most expensive paper stock is the hinged lay flat paper. It's quite uh, a bit thicker. It's almost like card but it has a plastic hinge embedded in it during manufacture, which allows it to lie flat when it's bound into book form. That plastic hinge uh, might sound worrying, but it's really, really tough. It's not going to deteriorate over time. Lay flat books, perhaps unsurprisingly, tend to lie flat in contrast to what you will find with our standard paper, which because everything is bound from the side, uh, tends to have that uh, gutter bulge, where in some cases, depending on how many pages are in your book and where you are in the book, you may need to hold those pages open uh, when you're looking at a standard book. So lay flat has two advantages. It lies flat, so that you don't have to hold those pages open. And it also has the perception of increased quality because of the thickness of that paper. 
and as well in some cases it can be useful to drag photos across that binding seam if you want to extend the photos across more than one page. But there are some situations where you might not want to do that, especially if there are linear features where small printing tolerances mean you might see a bit of disjointing between those left and right pages. Talk to us if you have any questions about doing that. Then you have covers to be thinking about. We offer two types of lamination for our printed covers. Printed covers are our most commonly selected option. You can have a matte laminated cover so that it's non-reflective, or you can have the default option, which is a gloss laminated cover, which will show reflected light. It really comes down to personal choice. The only time I would recommend anything is if you have a black cover or black background on your cover, you may wish to consider a matte laminated cover because it tends to show the fingerprints slightly less obviously compared to a gloss laminated black cover. But otherwise, it's really personal choice. We also have fabric covers that you can choose if you don't wish to have a printed cover. We have a range of default fabrics uh, and also several premium fabrics. You might want to have foil printing or foil lettering on top of those covers, which we don't do ourselves at Cahoots, but we can direct you to service providers that can provide that service. Lastly, we've got the end papers. The end papers are what's attached to the inside covers. You can't print on the inside of the covers, so your options are to have a white end paper on the inside front and back covers, that's the default, or for a small surcharge, you can opt to have a black end paper on the inside of your covers. Your choice there is may be governed by what colour you have made your cover, what backgrounds you have chosen to use perhaps on your first and last pages or throughout your book. Uh, most people will opt for the white because it's the default and they don't feel there's any need to have anything else. But we offer the option nevertheless. So let's now go and see where we configure all of these things inside our Kahoot's Easy Designer software. When you start a new project, you can use the File New menu item, and then you'll be presented with the project dialog in the center of your screen. You can open up an existing project and right now we're going to start a new project. Click on the New Project button. This will present us with the menu of product types that we can select. At the top, you'll see in the tree Image Hardcover Books, in contrast to the next section, which are the Fabric Hardcover Books. Most people seem to go for the image hardcover books. The options underneath are exactly the same. The only difference is the type of cover. By default, you've got the uh, A4 Classic Landscape selected, but you can choose any other option. Key to note is that the lay flat products are separate from the non lay flat products. This is because lay flat books have a slightly less wide page on which to design. That's mainly due to the stubs of the lay flat paper that get uh, bound during the binding process. So for that reason, you should make the decision up front whether you want lay flat or a standard type of book. 
The only thing apart from cost that you may need to consider is that Layflap books have a maximum page count of 80 pages. That's 80 sides of printing. In our standard paper, you can have up to 200 sides of printing depending on the format of the book. So once we've chosen a product, we can proceed using the next button. Here is where you can configure all the options we have just been talking about. So by default, you've got your standard 160 GSM satin paper. If you want, you can upgrade to a slightly lighter weight, warm white mat. And that has an extra cost per page. What is showing here is the extra cost for the minimum page count of 16 pages. If you need to look at what your ultimate cost will be for your book, you can figure that out on our website with our book quote calculator. So play around with that before you get to this point here, because as you add pages, you'll obviously be adding cost. Underneath we have the end papers, uh, white by default, otherwise in this case you would be paying an extra $4 if you selected to have black end papers. And lastly we have the options for the laminated printed cover, either gloss or matte. You do have the option to change these items before you order. Uh, they're a little bit hidden, but you can change them. Nothing is locked in at this point. The only thing that's locked in is whether you have chosen a lay flat book or not. In this case, we didn't choose the lay flat, so we have these options. Otherwise, if we go back, we choose the lay flat option, configure that. Uh, we have only one type of lay flat paper, but we get the same options for the end papers and the lamination. Next, it tells us the minimum cost based on a 16 page book. And then we can choose from a number of starting layouts. I always recommend this first option. You want to create uh, and design your book page by page in a way that makes sense to you. The second option, should you wish to try it out, is where the empty project is randomly created uh, with some of our predefined layouts and then it's just up to you to put the photos in the boxes. Or uh, the last option is it will generate a book for you automatically but you won't have any control over what photos are on what page, what orientation the photos are, etc. So not if you want a really really quick result you can try it out but 99.9% .9 of cases, I recommend this option one, which is the default. And then you have your starting point. In future sessions, we'll look at uh, how to create your photo book and how to navigate the different sections of the Easy Designer interface. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.